Hey guys, I'm Jeremy from CrowdRender and we're here today to invite you to download Alpha 013 from our website. Uh, it's releasing now. Go and get it and tell us what you think. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so we thought we'd give you a little bit of a demonstration of 013 release version. Very exciting to have that out. It's got us all very excited. So we're going to be using the 2.79a release candidate today to give you a little bit of a tour of the new features. It's only going to take you know, five, ten minutes. It's pretty quick. But there's some really cool stuff we've been working on and we hope you like it. And here's basically the rundown of what it is. So we just started a new scene. I'm going to go ahead and connect to some computers now to use them to render. One thing you might notice at first is there's no longer the need to put .local everywhere. Um, we've fixed that now so you can just go ahead and press connect pretty much. Um, no need to remember whether you're on Mac or Windows and whether you have to type in .local all the time. That's gone. You'll never see it again. I'm sure that's got many people happy. Or maybe it didn't even bother you. I'm not sure. Um, maybe give us some comments down below to tell us what you think. That, that helps, by the way. Telling us what you think helps. Um, it allows us to make things better. Okay, so everything's synchronized, which is really cool. Okay, really quick features. Um, I'm on a laptop, so I like to render like this. I like to turn off my local machine, i.e. this laptop I'm screen casting from, and only render on the other computers, which means it's still nice and fast because I've got three other computers helping me out at the moment. Um, and my laptop stays nice and quick, so I can do like even long-running animations, and I can go and browse the web on Safari or Firefox or whatever, and I can come back to Blender and see all the frames coming in, and I can still actually use my laptop. It's reasonably quick. Um, so that's a nice feature there if you're wanting to use your laptop or something to start and control the render from maybe another room or from down the road at the cafe, perhaps, and you don't want it to turn into an oven sitting on your lap. So that's pretty good. So we'll turn that back off for a second. Next new feature is custom render tile sizes. So you can actually come in here and create Sorry, you can customize the render tile size so that if you know if render three was a GP had a GPU in it, um, we could go maybe to 128 or whatever, and it's going to render now with much larger tile sizes compared to the other guys who have a, a value of zero, which means it uses the default value, which is down here, which is 32. Um, so this is pretty good if you've got um, some computers which you want to render using a CPU and some which you want to render using a GPU. Um, you can actually optimize the tile size for all of them. Okay, so the next feature I'm going to explain to you or try to, because it's, it's a little bit tricky, is that when you open a new file or you open Blender after closing it, um, the load balancer remembers all the optimization. So you might notice that, you know, when you do a render for the first time ever using CrowdRender, it can be a little bit odd, you know, like some of these numbers don't quite line up. And as you do more and more renders, it eventually settles out to be fairly even like it's doing now. Um, one of the long-standing issues we've had with CrowdRender was it was just a little bit unfortunate that we couldn't save all the data that it collected about how fast the computers are, and therefore every time you opened a file, it would have to start optimizing from scratch. That no longer happens. It now has a place to store all of the data about how fast the computers are going. It stores that just on your hard drive. And it uses that every time Blender starts. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to talk about, and this is this is the exciting bit. I'm going to open a new file to show you compositing. Compositing is actually I'm not going to open a new file that way because I can't find it. There we go. We'll, do, we'll try that. So those of you who've been using CrowdRender for a little while will no doubt remember the unpleasantness that was compositing in 0.12 and before. Um, when this finally loads, behold, compositing in 013. It's, it's going to be a lot better, and I'll show you why. As soon as this loads, which I might speed up, it's an unusually long load time for this file. Okay, guys, I'm back after what was quite an epically long file load. I guess it's because it's got a lot of objects in the scene or something to do with that. Anyway, um, I want to talk about compositing, which is an exciting thing at the moment here because if you've been following along or using CrowdRender 012 for a while, you'll probably be aware that compositing wasn't the best. Um, we had built a little workaround which involves you know ticking this checkbox um, and then clicking a button which makes a node network to try and get all of the image tiles back together and put them into Blender properly, but it was a mess. So I am very excited today to present to you 013 with completely integrated compositing, which is great. So now you can just do this. 
So I've currently got a file here with compositing set up. So previously, the problem was we couldn't get any data into the render layers node at all, except for the combined pass. So if you wanted to use other passes like depth or anything like that, um, it just didn't work and it was a bit of a basket case. So I want to present a use case here for basically using CrowdRender on an existing project which already has a compositing network. Um, just to give you guys an idea of how to drop CrowdRender into an existing thing that you're working on and get it to do rendering and also compositing and produce your final output. So very simply, we've just opened the file and the assumption is that you've already got a file with a compositing network set up that you have ticked compositing in the compositor, um, as you would normally would do if you were doing a final render in Blender, then all you really need is some computers connected and then you just go ahead and you press render. Now I'm actually going to turn my laptop off for this because it's also screencasting and that doesn't feel fair to burden it with both screencasting and rendering. I'd be being quite mean to it. I don't want to do that. Okay, so the other machines are now working on rendering it. Uh, poor old render number three seems to have got the one part of the screen that actually has something to render in it, so it's going to lag behind for a bit. I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch that poor computer labor. Okay, and it's done. So if we have a look at, we're looking at the viewer output here, you can see that without having to do anything else, all the data came back through the compositor and it's done all of the compositing passes for us automatically. So that's the viewer node output. And if you look at the composite output, which is what would go end up going into you know, all your rendered frames, same thing, it's been composited and you didn't have to do a second pass like you would have had to do normally in 012. So 013 hopefully is going to be a lot more usable for you, given that it can now do compositing automatically. And it will do this for animations as well, so your entire production can just go through the compositor automatically as each frame is rendered. Um, I also just want to show you that we do indeed have all of the passes. So I'm going to just quickly show you, this wouldn't have been possible in 012, so I'm going to show you the depth pass because you wouldn't have been able to, do oh gosh, gotta wait, sorry, computer's having a bit of a, ooh, I'm thinking about this, James. Uh, thinking, we'll be back right after the computer has thought about it, and it's happy for us to proceed. Oh, and it's happy, yay! Okay, continue, oh no, not continue, continue? Yes, continue, Phew. Okay, so we're gonna connect the depth pass, and wait a bit longer. Sorry guys, yeah, laptop, not the best for doing Blender, but, Luckily, I can edit all this out. Hey, okay, there we go. Now we have a depth pass. So this prior to 013 would not have been possible. Um, you would have to have used the workaround method, which would have constructed another node called basically a group node with similar outputs on it, but couldn't be used to do final animations. You had to render everything out to images first and then import all the images doing a second pass to actually render everything with compositing. But now you can just hit render animation and as long as compositing is ticked in the performance tab, it will just do the whole lot for you, which I think is just a heck of a lot more useful. So that's pretty much it guys for the updates. Um, I think we've covered most things. Um, there's some release notes on the website when you go to download it so you can have a look through there and see what else we fixed. There is a, a little bit more stuff than I've got time to talk about today. Um, we're going to do a few more sort of update tutorials on how to do some exciting things like how to handle animation cache. This is an animated file and it was rendered using CrowdRender. Um, I'm going to show you a clip of that at the end of the video. Also, we're going to look at how to use external files. A lot of people have been asking about how can I do a render in CrowdRender when my file like has external HDRIs, external textures and external blend files with props in them. So stay tuned for that. There's going to be some cool tutorials coming up showing you how to use CrowdRender with all of those kinds of projects and that's going to help you get your stuff done faster. So until next time guys, I am going to sign off. Uh, thank you very much for watching our video. I hope you go ahead and download this. And one thing I would ask you to do is if you find value in what we're doing, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Twitter, Facebook or the website and please share what we're doing and help us get the word out. Uh, the more people that use and test this, uh, the more it convinces us that we should pay attention to it and work on it more. Thanks guys, all the best, and I'll leave you with this enjoyable clip of the animation that we rendered with CrowdRender, and hopefully you'll enjoy that too. Bye bye for now!